Hello from Gardening at Duenza in Ireland and this is my December greenhouse update where we have a look around my greenhouse. Now this is a greenhouse that I keep at a five degree minimum here. It's one for helping plants to just tick over during the winter. Plants that aren't suitable to my climate because of uh, cold and wet outside. And we're just going to take a very quick look around and see what's looking nice and what's looking not, I suppose, at this time of year. But, you know, I'm sure we'll find something to, to show you. And we're taking a look up the staging in the greenhouse now. And I'm going to try and pick out things that I haven't mentioned so many times before. Um, we have this little curl cactus which has white tips in there, but I don't think it's going to flower at all. Yeah, it's looking okay. Behind it we have the smaller of my agave attenuata brought back from Madeira um, a year and a half ago, two years ago. There's the larger of the two, doing well, but yeah, no sign of flowers. And here we have Feltimia Bracteata, which has flowered for me a lot from the main bulb, which is this one here. And I don't actually see any sign of flower coming from the main bulb this year. But the two side bulbs are sending up spikes, so they're definitely flowering size, and that's good. Uh, maybe the big one will produce something yet, but um, that's good news anyway. So, moving along up, we have some nice little succulents covered in cobwebs. <laughs> um, this one here, Haworthia, I think. Mm, Compton's Carousel, Acaviria Compton's Carousel. Sorry, I have to show you this one always. It just is such a fantastic plant. And behind it, the Buffone, which also is always such a fantastic plant. Now, yeah, will that one flower for me this year? We will have to see. So let's just move down a bit past the Amaryllis that didn't flower because it desperately needs repotting. This is a true Amaryllis. And we have some succulents under the staging, which are really looking quite well. The Gasteria looking fantastic. Now a friend of my husband's, Ava, in Portugal sent me these and look how big and meaty they are. They're really doing well. In fact everything down here is really doing quite amazingly. <laughs> Epiphyllums, no sign of flowers but um, yeah let's go down there and have a look. Up here we have some other succulents including Calanco Beharansa. This was a one I propagated from a leaf, the variety called Fang, that has little nobbles on the undersides of the leaves. Let's see if we can have a look there at those. Yeah. And what are we looking at here? Now, this is an aloe that I grew from seed. 2014, I collected seed of this species aloa in Italy, in um, Sicily. And some of you may have seen Lynn from Desert Plants of Avalon's re recent video where she has reported on the progress of her plants from the same seed. Now I'm going to link to Lynn's video up above. And Lynn is mad about succulents and cacti. And when I saw hers, I said, my goodness, they're so much bigger than mine. But this one actually is looking really quite meaty. They're really good. The species name will be in the details at the end of this video because I can't remember it off the top of my head. But anyway, go check out Lynn's channel. She's great and always so supportive of me and always giving me shout outs. Thank you so much, Lynn and Hans. Right, so we're going to move over here now and this time we're looking at something really quite special. Now this is Scylla madarensis, 
which I grew from seed as well. Seed what I collected in Madeira uh, two years ago, almost two years ago. And this is a bulb. It produces a bulb. It's summer dormant. And yeah, this is my biggest one. We will just have to pop over here to see the other ones past these things. These are just really popping out of dormancy at the moment. Can you see the shoot there on this particular one? So that's very much still alive. Now these are out in a greenhouse that gets a five degree minimum but they seem to be doing okay. Here at the top of the greenhouse what really sticks out are the cymbidiums and this white one has two spikes at the moment. They haven't quite opened fully but um, yeah, they're doing okay. This spike there, probably because of the low temperatures. And there's another one back there. And they really are quite pretty. Now, <laughs> I promised myself this year that I would move these into the house to enjoy them in the house. But I left it too late and before I knew it, well, I had buds and then it was too late to move them in. So, yeah. Next year maybe I'll get I'll get them inside. This yellow no ID cymbidium has some good buds coming too. And over here the red one has two spikes with buds and a little spider in there. This one too. Moving over here to the pelagonium table and we see this winter flowering species one just coming into bud. Can't remember the name off the top of my head again, but again check out the details. Now this one is very thorny. It's featured in previous winter greenhouse updates and it kind of it's summer deciduous to a certain extent and it started to push out leaves. Um, just recently and now it has buds. Now you'll see the stems there are quite dark and that's because I had a, a white fly infestation in the greenhouse and it produced this kind of sooty stuff that went all over my citrus and a couple of other plants including this but there was no cleaning it off because of the spines and the stems so I've had to leave it. Luckily it had no leaves because to clean soft leaves like this of um, that kind of uh, black stuff would be impossible. So the new leaves that are pushing up are clean, but the stems bear the the scars of my past untidiness. Let's just say. Over here we have my desus in winter. Not a pretty sight. Never a pretty sight. But putting up new growths, and I will. Yeah, it's good. They're not actually sitting in water at the moment, just keeping them barely moist because, well, normally they sit in water, but in winter the danger of botrytis is quite high. And over here by the Furcrea, which I don't think is going to flower now, we have one Brugmansia in flower. And there's always one, isn't there? <laughs> there's always one Brugmansia flower doing its best. This is actually a double one. You can see the inside of it, it might drop now because there isn't enough sunshine but uh, it's still quite pleasant. Epiphyllum acromanii in flower, two smallish flowers but um, still quite good. And a second Brugmansia in flower, this time it's Sanguinea and it has lots of flowers, very pretty orange things. Look what we have here, my goodness, it's a pack of tulips that I completely forgot to plant. And look, they've got green shoots and everything. I'm going to have to put them in a pot immediately. That's just terrible. Just moving up here to the Puya. I wonder, can you see this? Now I have to be very careful because this is a very prickly plant. So if we look in here, you can see, can you see him? Little snail. He knows he's safe in there. I can't get him. 
basically, you know, a greenhouse like this, it's not an orchid greenhouse where it's very important that everything is sterile. This is a working greenhouse with a variety of plants. And, you know, we take the rough with the smooth. There are a variety of insects in here at any given time. I just have to be careful that the buildup of pests isn't too much. Okay, that's it. I'm on my way out of the greenhouse now. I need to do a little bit of watering in here and a bit of tidying up, but that's all. Um, I hope you're staying warm this December. And oops, I just knocked something over. So I better better finish up here. Thanks for watching. Bye now.